Good morning, good morning, uh, Mount Hermon Missionary Baptist Church family and friends. Uh, I don't know what's going on today, but there's been having some technical difficulties with the Chromebook today. Uh, so I just had to um, put this little message out here on, on today on my little uh, Chromecast little pad today. Um, hope you can hear me. Hope you can hear me. Um, uh, matter of fact, let's just begin with a word of prayer. Father God, thank you for another day and opportunity. Dear Heavenly Father, we, we see, Lord, that the devil is real busy today, but Lord, we ain't going to let him stop your program, your program today, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being God all by yourself. Thank you, Dear Heavenly Father, for your provision, your protection. We thank you, Lord, that you are God. We, we honor you. We praise you today, Lord. Lord, I ask, Heavenly Father, let your word go forth, Heavenly Father, that somebody may feel inspired, feel encouraged, even feel chastised, dear Heavenly Father, because, Lord, you know it's all about you. It's not about us, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you today. We love you. We praise you. You're worthy in spite of whatever's going on, Lord. You're still worthy of all the honor, the glory, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, yeah, I've been having some technical difficulties this morning. Um, the camera wasn't working on the Chromebook, so I'm going to have to see about getting that fixed. I don't, I don't know what's going on, uh, but you know what? Nevertheless, God is still good. God is still good. We're still going to move forward. Uh, today, you just get a little up close and personal <laughs> with your pastor today. So, uh, God bless you. Um, the sermon today is going to come from Romans chapter number 11. Chapter number 11, verses 33 through 36. Romans chapter 11. Verse 33 through 36, I, I'll be reading the King James Version. When you find it, you'll find these words recorded. It says, Oh, the death of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments, his ways past finding out. For who have known the mind of the Lord, or who have been his counselor, or who have first given to him, and it shall be recompensed upon or unto him again. For of him and through him and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. Amen. I want to speak for a few moments as this as the Holy Ghost shall guide from this thought. I want to talk about God knows what he's doing. God knows what he's doing. Um, there's this pattern that goes on in the New Testament, in this New Testament epistle of Paul. He 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 begins by explaining doctrine and then he exhorts to duty. Uh, this pattern kind of reminds us that doctrine and duty go together in the Christian life. When you, when doctrine is the word of God, duty is us following the word that we received out of the doctrine. Uh, so doctrine and duty go together because Christianity is not a religious activism. Uh, it's, it, 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 it's not a religious activism that's disconnected from doctrine. No, 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 no. Uh, Christianity goes along with the doctrine. And Christianity uh, marries belief to our behavior. Okay, so to be a disciple of Christ is to think and act biblically. Not think and act as you want to act, but think and act biblically. Because it goes hand in hand. So Paul wisely begins this letter by laying down some doctrinal foundation. But not only that, then he starts and builds on it a call to live out the life of the teaching of our faith. So it is with this book in Romans that Paul, Paul addresses everything that we need to know of how to live doctrinally. Because Romans 11 and this, this text in Romans 11 chapter uh, uh, chapter 11 verses 33 through 36 is a bridge between these two major sections because after teaching the doctrine of justification by faith alone and before exhorting his readers to live a, a sacrifice of God Paul writes this doxology to praise God this doxology rebukes or, or overemphasizes the practical Christianity for many uh, the most important question about faith is does it work we view Christianity pragmatic in pragmatic terms because Paul was not hasty to make faith practical. Before he shows us how to walk in the truth of gospel, Paul pauses to dances to it. 
uh, in so doing, he teaches us that sound doctrine begins and ends with doxology. The known author, uh, R. N. Hughes, he says it like this. Our study of God and his ways among us should turn our, our hearts to music. This is what happens to Paul in Romans uh, 1 through 11. He climbs as, as high as he can to submit to submit a truth. Yet he is still a long way from his peak because he's unable to climb any higher. Paul prostrates himself in worship the incomprehensibility of God. He rejoices in the fact that God knows what he's doing even when he don't, when we don't. William Carey put it like this. He said, uh, he because he said, I had to overcome obstacles to take the gospel all the way to India. But he finally found himself aboard the Oxford bound for Asia. And before the ship lift, lifted his anchor, Carey was deposited back on land by the ship's captain, who received an anonymous letter against Carey. In response, Carey wrote to his friend Andrew Fuller, all I can say is this in this affair is that However mysterious the leadings of providence are, I have no doubt, but they are superintended by an infinitely wise God. This is a God-centered perspective of the life and ministry of God. There are times when the leading, uh, the leading of providence are mysterious. It is when life does not make sense. It is when you are forced to live with unanswered questions. And I believe right now we are in a time where, where, where life doesn't seem to make sense. We got some questions that are un unanswered. But we got to realize as Christians that we know that God knows what he's doing. God knows what he's doing even when we don't. When life doesn't make sense, we have to believe as Christians that God knows what he's doing. We, we are going through this this time and it seems like everybody's talking about the pandemic all the time but you got to understand this it's what it's our reality it's our it's our new normal it's, it's here it ain't going away no time soon matter of fact uh, you the more you read the bible you understand that it's going to get worse before it gets better it's going to get worse before it gets better and so if it's going to get worse before it gets better you still need to leave with the fact that god knows what he's doing as believers as believers, as, as, as true followers, as, with that walking on this Christian journey, journey, we need to understand that God knows what He's doing. Even when you don't, when when life don't seem to make sense, you still need to know God still knows what He's doing. If you believe God is still in charge, then you ought to already know that God, I will follow you even when I can't trace you. Yeah, I'm gonna trust you, and I can't trace you, but I know it's still you. I'm a steal. Matter of fact, matter of fact, uh, I, I was inspired by my sister's book uh, to, to, to give you this analogy right here. It's not an analogy. It's actually a important story because Peter, when he heard the voice of God, even though the rest of the disciples who were on that same boat thought that it was a ghost, Peter said, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. The Lord said, come. Peter, even though he couldn't really see if it was the Lord, he heard the voice of the Lord, and he started walking, and when he started walking, Peter was walking on water. He didn't have to look down, he just started walking, because he heard the voice of the Lord said, come. And he kept walking, and as long as he kept his eyes on the Lord, excuse me, kept his eyes on the Lord, kept his faith in the Lord, he was walking on water. It was until he started hearing the sounds of everything going on around him that he took his eyes and his focus off God when he started to sink. Let me tell you right now, that's the problem that's going on with us here in America today. We have taken our eyes off God. We've taken our eyes off God. We have shut our ears to the voice of the Lord. We have, we have shut our ears and our minds to the doc from the doctrine of the Lord and we started following on our own uh, following what we hear around us and we start to sink and we sink in and we sink in and we sink in but cut because we forgot that God still knows what he's doing. God knows what he's doing. And this text teaches us, it reaches out to us that we ought to trust God even when you can't trace God. This text, this text, verse 36 goes like this, all oh, the depths of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgment and how unscrutable are his ways. This verse is filled with uh, theological
theologically loaded words, but the most important word is the first one, oh. <laughs> it is a sigh or a groan or a cry of an enraptured heart. Because in Romans 1 through 11, Paul gives the clearest explanation of the gospel anywhere. Uh, H.E. Robinson wrote, wrote it like this. He said, Paul's argument concerning God's elective grace and goodness has carried him to the heights. Now he pauses on the edge of the, precip uh, the precipitous as he contemplates God's wisdom and knowledge and fully conscious of his inability to sound, sound the bottom with the plummet of human reason and word. Paul's mind is now empty, but his heart is full. Say that again. Paul's mind is now empty, but his heart is full. And with a sense of wonder, he celebrates the, that, that God who is too deep and too high to figure out. You know what I'm saying? He, God is too deep because he, he, he has ultimate wisdom. He, he has ultimate wisdom. God has so much wisdom that you will never, ever, ever figure everything out about God. Never figure everything out about God. But here, here's the thing. God, God is not going to allow you to figure out everything about him because if you figure everything out about God, then you will stop leaning and trusting God. Uh, you, we, we'll walk around like, like the government, walk around like we acting like we know everything when we know no thing. <laughs> uh, Paul said, lets us know right here in this text that God is too deep for us to figure out. You don't believe me? Watch this. Let's go back to verse... 33, the, the A part of verse 33 says, Oh, the depths of the riches and wisdom of the knowledge of God. The governing thought of this statement is that God is deep. The truth of God is shallow enough for a child to drink from it without fear of drowning. Yet it's so deep that scholars are, can dive in and still never reach the bottom. The deeper you go in the ocean, the darker the water becomes. And there's a pressure-filled depth where no human can survive. This is breaking point is where God resides. Oh, the depths of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. God's riches are so deep that you can never get to them. What, what does it mean by being rich? Here, I'm glad you asked. Here it is. It is to be independent, self-sufficient, without need. By this standard, no one is truly rich. Uh-huh. The wealthiest persons are dependent on others in countless ways and they don't even know it. Ultimately, only God is rich because some of the richest men in the world have agreed to give half their wealth to charity. That's impressive until you consider that all of God's riches are spent for the benefits of others. You don't believe me? Romans chapter 2 verse 4 says, Or do you presume on the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience, not knowing that God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance? Romans 9, 22, 24 says, What if God desires to show his wrath and to make known his power uh -huh, and has endured with much patience vessels of wrath prepared for destruction in order to make known the riches of his glory for vessels of mercy? Oh, that don't get you. Romans 10, 12 through 13 says, For there is no distinction between Jew or Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Uh, there's no need to live in sin, guilt, worry, doubt, or fear because Philippians 4.19 says, And my God shall supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. God's wisdom is deep. Uh, God's riches are deep. But not only God's riches are deep, God's wisdom is deep. Now watch this. Because wisdom is best understood in relationship to knowledge. Knowledge is what you know. Wisdom is what you do with that, that which you know. Let me say that again. Knowledge is what you know, but wisdom is what you do with what you know. Mm -hmm. It is the right implement, it, implementation of knowledge. Because in scripture, wisdom is, a spirit, is spiritual and not intellectual. It is moral goodness to be wise to pursue the proper end by the proper means. How does one become wise and bad your ass? James chapter 1 verse 5 puts it like this. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach. It will, it will be given to him. True wisdom comes from God. True wisdom comes from God. Uh, we, we got a lot of, lot of folks who, who claim to be smart. 
claim to be smart. We all, there, there's a lot of people out there who claim to be smart, but lack, but lack wisdom. Uh, you, you you say folks got, a lot of folks got a lot of book smart, but, but they lack street wisdom or, or, or street smarts. And this is why stuff happened to them in the streets because they weren't moving smartly because it, it, because the street life don't go by the book all the time. You don't believe me? This is why we have social injustice. How? Because they're not going by the book. If they were going by the book, uh, uh, then there will be justice for all. But since we're not going by the book, uh, we they, they live in, in with, by the street rules. And, and not only are, 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 are gangbangers and all these other folks living by street rules, but so is the police. They live in by street rules and they go in with the street mentality, which is why we have the social and racial injustice that's going on because we're not living by the book. All right. God's wisdom is deep. He, 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 he's so deep. First Corinthians chapter one, verses 20 through 21 says, where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdoms of the world? Ha. For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. The cross of Jesus is the wisdom of God at work. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 22 through 25 says it like this. For Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, which is a stumbling block to the Jews and folly to the Gentiles. But to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, for the foolishness of God is wise, more wiser than men, and the weakness of God is still stronger than man. <sighs> not, not only is God's uh, riches deep, not only is God's wisdom deep, but watch this, God's knowledge is deep. Oh, God's knowledge is so deep that, as I said before, we would never truly Truly understand God. Never truly understand God. But 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 the way God operates, He doesn't operate by logic. Now He don't operate logically. Uh, like 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 I said before, uh, uh, God adds by subtracting. God uh, multiplies by dividing. I uh, see God God operates not how we how we want Him to operate or how we think He should operate. God operates how He operates because He is who He is. And since he is who he is, he does what he does. God, God is so, God is so deep. His knowledge is so deep that that God God operates on his own accord. He operates in his own riches, his own wisdom, uh, and, and, and his own knowledge. Because watch this. I believe it was uh, June, June 17, 1972. There was five men who were arrested for breaking into the Democratic National Committee headquarters. Uh, at the Watergate office complex in Washington, D.C. Washington. The fallout actually led to the resignation of then President Richard Nixon. It is, it is the first and only time the president the presidency has been resigned. This second-rate burglary er erupted into a national scandal by the persistence of investigative reporters with two questions. What did the president know and when did he know it? Let's ask these questions of God. What does God know? God is omniscient. God knows all things. There's nothing that God does not know. God knows all things known and unknown and knowable. God knows all things past, present, and future. God knows all things actual, potential, and theoretical. God knows all things in heaven, on earth, and even in hell. What? When did God know it? God's perfect knowledge is eternal. God has never learned anything. In eternity past, God knew all things. And when, it, and when this hiccup of eternity called Time is consummated. God will not know one thing in eternity future that he did not know in eternity past. It's, it's almost like, it's almost like uh, 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 you, you, you heard this, this, this powerful phrase in the Bible called, but God. Uh, it's anything that happened, happened before the but. God changes it after the but. He connects them together. This happened, but I happened, and since I happened, then this is gonna happen. Uh, but but God is so powerful. Uh, it's simply because whatever happened before, uh, the Bible says, uh, when we were yet sinners, Christ died. We've been sinning for a long time. 
We were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. But God sent Jesus to die on the cross for sins past, present, and future. God's, God's knowledge, God knew we was going to sin from the beginning. God knew we couldn't save ourselves from the beginning. God knew some folk wasn't going to believe in him from the beginning. No matter how much you preach to him, no matter how much you talk to him, no matter, no matter how much you tell him how good God is, uh, they're not going to believe. God knew this. Jesus still died for him anyway. He knew folk wasn't going to accept him. But he died anyway. So here it is. Here it is. God's knowledge is so deep that God knew this before the beginning of time. And now we live in this consummated, this time, this consummated time. Uh, once this time is over, God, there's nothing God wouldn't have known. God had known, known it in eternity. He, gonna, he know it in present, and he know the future before we even get there. God already knows. Matter of fact, God already knows how this pandemic is going to turn out. This is why I can smile in the midst of it, because God already knows how it's going to turn out before it's even over. God, God is, 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 is so powerful. God is so awesome. God has given us an opportunity right now to worship him. Not in a sanctuary. God is trying to get us to understand uh, that the Bible says, know ye not that your body is the temple. You don't have to run to no building. Your body is the building. How he says, know ye not that your body is the temple and the Holy Ghost wants to dwell there. He don't want to dwell in an unclean vessel even though he know you ain't going to always be clean. This, I'm talking about the knowledge of God. About the knowledge of God. God is so deep. God says, I want to live inside you. This is why uh, uh, when Jesus died and he said, I got to go back to the Father, but I won't leave you, I, I will, I won't leave you comfortless. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to dwell inside of you. Uh, now that the Holy Spirit is inside of you, you ought to allow the Holy Spirit who got the same knowledge of God. You got the knowledge of God living inside of you. And if we lean on the knowledge of God, because scripture still tells us, lean not to your own understanding. Lean, lean on God's knowledge and wisdom who's inside of you and let the spirit lead God and protect you. Uh, but watch, the B part of this, this little Easter speech today says it like this. God is too high for us to figure out. Verse 33 again. Oh, the depths of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and how unscrutable are his ways. This exclamation declares that God, who is infinitely deep, is transcendently high. Isaiah 55, 8 through 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God is too high for you to figure out. His judgments are unsearchable. Just, watch this. Because judgment is a judicial term which often used to refer to the condemnation and punishment of sin. Yet, this context here speaks of the judgment of God in a broader sense. It refers to God's decree or his decisions. Because watch this. In the ancient world, the ruler was also the judge. So, it is with God. God is the ruler, but he's also the judge, and his judgments are unsearchable. Isaiah 40, 28 says it like this, Have you not known, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. Uh, God's judgments are unsearchable. We do not know what God is up to when a person seems to be punished by God. When Jesus and his disciples passed a man who was born blind. Watch this. You remember last week's sermon. When Jesus and his disciples passed a man who was born blind, the disciples assumed he was afflicted because of some wrongdoing. But Jesus said, it was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed through him. God's punitive judgments are unsearchable. But likewise, God's gracious judgments are also unsearchable. 
We do not know what God is up to when a person seems to be punished by God, and we do not know what God is up to when a person seems to be blessed by God. There is no reason to be jealous when others experience favor. Mm, mm, mm. Uh -uh. There is no room for pride when we experience favor. God's gracious judgments are unsearchable. His ways are unscrutable. Judgment refers to God's decrees. Ways refer to God's activity. Watch this. God's ways are the path or road that he travels to accomplish his judgment. They are unscrutable, which means to be unable to track or trace by footprint. Remember I said earlier, Lord, I'm, I'm just going to trust you even when I can't trace you. <laughs> they are unfathomable. <laughs> they, are past, they are past trying to find out. Matter of fact, Psalm 77, 19 says, your ways was through the sea, your path through the great waters, yet your footprints are still unseen. This is God. God is real. God is alive. God is moving. God is going somewhere. Whether you know where he's going or not, God is still going somewhere. God always reaches his intended destination. Here it is. Here it is. The story of uh, 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 Gomer. Gomer. Gomer was a prostitute. And, uh, uh, okay, all right. You know, I, I preached an unadulterated Bible. I don't know what Bible you've been reading. But Gomer was a, was a harlot, was a prostitute. Read the Bible, Hosea chapter 1. Read it. Go ahead. Uh, Gomer was a prostitute. Yet, God sent Hosea, the preacher, to marry the prostitute. Marry the prostitute to show us how God knows our ways are unsettling just like Gomer's was. But yet Jesus was right there waiting for the winds of change to blow back around and still be there when it's time for you, when you finally got it together. Now I'm not got it together like got your life perfect, but no, when you finally realize that God is God is where you need to be and who needs to be in your life, when you finally get that together, Jesus says, I've been right here the whole time. Ah, yeah, even though we take the long way around often to get to Jesus. God says, my ways are unsearchable. Because right, you sit back and you start thinking, Lord, why was I so hard-headed? Why was I so hard-headed? What took me so long to realize that uh, I should have been with you, I should have stayed with you all along, or I should have came to you a long time ago? Because oftentimes, Jesus, I, I, I say God play too much because I believe God sometimes just sit there and be laughing. Boy, look at that little knucklehead boy. Oh Lord, have mercy! Lord, have mercy! They, we, we won't. He won't take the long route, so God had to send some folk through the hospital route. God sent some folk through the prison route. God sent some some folk through the military route. God sent you the long way around, so like you gonna get it eventually, because the way God does things is unsearchable. Psalm one hundred three and seven says, "He may know his ways to Moses." His acts to the people of Israel. Israel witnesses God's mighty acts, but they did not know why God did what he did. God only made his ways known to Moses. Yet even Moses still didn't get it. He was, Moses was disqualified for leading Israel into Canaan when his anger dishonored the Lord and he took matters into his own hand. But watch that. From that, we must conclude that God's works in mysterious ways. His wonders to perform, he plants his footsteps on the sea and rides on every storm. If you think you in a storm right now, God rides on every storm. You got to embrace the truth of God's greatness. God is, God, you, you, you hear folks say in church, when we, when we were in church, God is great and God is greatly to be praised because God is, is great and he is greatly to be praised. He, he, he's great to be praised for his mighty acts. You want, you don't want, let me, let me, let me tell let me inform you on one of God's mighty acts in case you don't know. Uh, the Bible says all have sinned, falling short of the glory of God. Stop right there. Bible also says that the wages of such sin is death. But God, God says, uh, even though you should die in your sin, I am so rich in mercy so rich in knowledge, so deep in my wisdom that I knew you was going to see it before you thought about sinning and then you did it anyway, yet I still got enough grace to wake you up in the morning. To wake you up this morning, let you see another day, even in spite of that which you did that should have caused you to die. Hi. 
God is good. God is good. We need to embrace the truth of God's greatness. The attributes of God are categorized in two ways. Watch this. Uh, he got communicable attributes and he got incommunicable attributes. Communicable, uh, communicable attributes are those we can share with God, being creatures made in his image. For instance, the attributes mentioned in verse 33, wisdom and knowledge, are communic communicable attributes. But incommunicable attributes belong to God all by himself. Because verse 34 through 35 declares that the incommunicable attributes, it confronts us with the fact that God is God and we are not. God is so great that he does not need our advice or our assistance. God don't need our advice. Verse 34 says, for who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor? This rhetorical question assumes a negative answer. No one knows the mind of the Lord. That's a paradox. Watch this. There's a sense in which we can know the mind of God. We can know the mind of God through God's word. Watch. Because 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 says, All scripture is breathed out, of my, breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. We can know the mind of God through God's spirit. 1 Corinthians 2.12 says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit of who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. Yet, we cannot know the mind of God. I, 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 I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little sensitive about criticizing motive. Uh, I, I, my sin, uh, criticizing motive, words, deeds, and choices, uh, all of that are fair game. But motives should be off limits because a person can do the right thing for the wrong reason or a person can do the wrong thing with good intentions. You don't know the difference because watch this. We cannot know uh, what is in another person's heart and mind. For that matter, you are not fully in touch with your own motivations. Jeremiah 17 and 9 says it like this. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? Who then can know the mind of God? Jesus Christ is the only person who knows the mind of, of, of God. John, John chapter 1 verse 18 puts it like this. No one has ever seen God. Hmm. The only God who is the Father, who is at the Father's side, he has made him known. Jesus is the exegesis of God. Ha <laughs> ha, boy, I'm about to shout myself. Jesus is the exegesis of God. Christ alone reveals the mind of God to us. Uh, 1 Corinthians 2, 16 says, For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. No one has been the Lord's counselor. Nobody counsels God. Let, let me just let that sink in for a moment. No one counsels God. Now, God is his own counselor. No one counsels him. <laughs> Isaiah 40, 13 says, who has measured the spirit of the Lord or what man shows him his counsel? We sometimes act as if we are qualified to be God's counselor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we act like we, we qualified enough to be God's counselor, but we are not. Job learned this the hard way. By sat satanic intentions and divine permission, Job, Job suffered more than any human being has ever suffered except Jesus. Job's misguided friends assumed Job suffered because he had to he had done wrong. But watch this. But there was no hidden, unconfessed sin in Job's life uh, that brought down the wrath of God on him. Job suffered because he had done what was right, not because he had done what was wrong. Job subpoenaed God for a de deposition. Watch this. God, God showed up in a whirlwind with his own list of questions. Job wanted to know where God was when his life fell apart. God wanted to know where was Job when he created the heaven and the earth. <laughs> in Job 42 Job responded I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted who is this that hides counsel without knowledge therefore I have uttered that I did not understand things too wonderful for me which I did not know here and I will speak I will question you you make it known to me I had heard of you by the hearing of the ear but now my eyes see you there I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes God don't need your advice. God don't need your assistance. God does what he does because God is who he is. And then verse 35 says it like this. Who has given a gift to him 
that he might be repaid. This is a quotation of Job chapter 41, 11, where God asked Job, who was first, who has first given to me that I should repay him? Whatever is under, is under the whole heaven is mine. The first principle of Christian stewardship is this. Everything belongs to God. Everything belongs to God. Psalms 24 tells us that from the beginning. Uh, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The world and those that dwell therein. For he has founded upon the seas and established it upon the flood. God made everything. God owns everything. We can never place God under obligation by what, what we give to him. God 